Vous voulez voyager Achetez vos billets d'avion à l'agent de voyage Tempo Afrique Travel. Avec l'agent de voyage Tempo Afrique Travel, pas de problème de connexion, pas de problème de transfert de vol. Avec l'agent de voyage Tempo Afrique Travel, c'est le voyage en toute tranquillité, en toute beauté, de votre maison jusqu'à votre destination. Votre satisfaction est notre plaisir. Good evening, viewers of Temple Africa TV, the only Pan-African web-based broadcasting outlet that promotes people, associations, institutions, and companies who are working tirelessly to help revitalize Africa as a united, prosperous, powerful, and sovereign continent. Welcome to our show, What's Up Africa, Café Free. Please join me today in welcoming a special guest, Professor Thomas Wesu Aden, Africologist, Communication Specialist, and Translator. Professor Wesu Aden holds a PhD in Africology and African American Studies from Temple University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He taught 33 different courses across five American universities. The list includes, it's very long, so I will say it includes, but it's not limited to Afrocentricity, the theory of social change. That's an example of, uh, uh, of the courses he taught. He also taught mass media and the black community, business and business communication and techniques and procedures of translation, just to name a few. I can assure you, Professor Wiswada, it's not a one-time translator. The United Nations Development Millennium Project for Africa, PMA UNDP, the West African Power Pool, the Economic Community of West African States, commonly known as ECOWAS, and Africa Non-Governmental Organization, among other institutions actually benefited from his translation services. But today, we'll be discussing his latest translation from French to English. The title is Nathan de Ake, a fierce shark in spite of himself. And the topic uh, we've agreed to uh, uh, actually thoroughly discuss is labeled as Honorable Nathan Diake's biography, A Wealth of Lessons to Learn. So we're here today to learn a lot of things from this translation, because the translator himself learned so much. And my first question, it goes to Professor Wiswada, is just to allow him to introduce himself. So how would you like to introduce yourself, Prof? Hello, Professor Desiree Balobi. Hello. I want to preface my remarks with a word of thanks to you, Professor Balobi, for the wonderful work you have been doing on Temple Afri TV. Through the instrumentality of your superb show, WhatsApp Africa, Kefel Afri, in two languages, English and French in order to help people of African descent stay grounded in the cultural territory, be proud of their Africanity, work hard for the development of the African continent and its people, and fundamentally rid themselves of three negative attitudes that the discipline of Africology strongly shuns. The three negative attitudes are, one, mental incarceration, what Malcolm X termed slave mentality, and Bob Marley called mental slavery. 
two, historical amnesia, and three, conceptual confusion. Professor Balobi, I pray that your show, What's Up Africa, soon compares with American Oprah Winfrey's show or Larry King Live. Thank you very much indeed for having me. You are the best indeed. In mm -hmm. fact, you are no less a genius. But this evening, you and I are going to celebrate an imperturbable genius, an unsung Beninese hero, Honorable Nathan Leake. To borrow Mrs. Balobi's cogent words, you and I are going to marshal our forces and husband our energies to bury, quote unquote, Honorable Nathan Leake while he's still alive, in an African philosophical sense, of course. Well, you said it all. However, since you give me a chance to introduce myself, above all, I, I am a professor. So I can only talk about my teaching career. Well, I am Professor Thomas Ojubani Rewisuadan, a PhD graduate of Temple University in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And in my capacity as an Afrocentric scholar, shunning monosexist language, what American writer Dale Spender called the man-made language, I always add sisterly affection. Yes, Philadelphia is a city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. Indeed, I am a naturalized American citizen. Therefore, I am a Beninese by nature and an American by nurture. As for my teaching career, aside from the courses that I currently teach in this country, I taught well over 30 courses for 19 years at five American universities, Temple University, Pierce College, the Philadelphia University, Drexel University, all four in the state of Pennsylvania, and the University of Toledo in the state of Ohio. As you aptly mentioned it in percent during your introductory remark, I am an Africologist, a communication specialist, and a translator, former member of the ATA, the American Translators Association. However, more than anything else, I am a professor, so I will only emphasize on my teaching. Selective Africological courses that I taught at Temple Universities are, one, Afrocentricity, the theory of social change. Two, Africa in the 20th century. Three, Introduction to African American Studies, and four, mass media and the black community. Besides, I taught at Pierce College a few Africological courses as well. They are, one, African American history, two, black art and music of the 20th century, and intercultural communication. Moreover, during my two year visiting professorship at the University of Toledo in Ohio, I taught, one, college composition, the African-American experience, two, pre-20th century African-American literature, and three, 20th century African-American literature. As for communication courses, selected courses I taught at Drexel University for many years are, one, principles of communication, two, techniques of speaking, three, business communication, and four, technical communication. With regard to translation selected courses that I taught are translation and its difficulties, two, techniques and procedures in translation, and three, scientific and technical translation. Again, thank you very much indeed, Professor Desiree Balobi. But before I get down to brass tacks and delve into an answer to the topic at hand, pertaining to Honorable Nathan Leake, it pleases me to say a few words about the author of the source text that I elected to translate into English, Mr. Okay. and doctoral candidate Luc Vernac Belli, if you don't mind, because three of us are actually embarked on this adventure. So am I allowed to? Yeah, very, very briefly, please. Very briefly. Very Luc Vernac Belli is a journalist by trade and a jurist by training. He is an expert in political communication and specialist of human resources management. Reading this first third book of his, I cannot only le requin malgré lui, 
that I translated into Natondi Ake, a field shark, in spite of himself. One can easily tell how this young man has the knack of crafting beautiful sentences, how his diction and writing style are fluid, clear, and elegant. Mr. Luc Fernand Belli is simply a wordsmith in the French language. Thank you very much, Professor Balbi. Yeah, thank you, Professor Wissouadin. I hope we'll get a chance to uh, interview uh, Dr. Pelly himself. Uh, he must have done a wonderful job because knowing who you are, uh, you wouldn't, if it had been otherwise, you wouldn't have accepted to translate it into English. Thank you for doing that, and thank you to Dr. Uh, Pelly. Now, my next question How did you get to know Member of Parliament Natondi Ake? Uh, thank you very much, Professor Balobi, for that wonderful question. It all started in 2019. As I was teaching a master course at ISMA, Institut Superior de Métiers de l'Audiovisuel, the University Institute of Audiovisual Studies, I was in class at 7 o'clock when the fine young man showed up in the class. He was then the director of studies, dean of studies at that school. And he came to introduce me to the students. And after the introduction, his long introduction, of course, he mentioned in passing that he has three books to his name. The first one is Put in Correction dans la Presse Beninoise, La Presse Beninoise, that I translated as common mistakes and inconsistencies in the written press in Benin. And the second book, he called it Parler et écrire sans foot, of course, in French, so which I try to translate into forceful speaking and writing without many glitches in French. So, and the third one he talked about I said, you know what? I need to patronize your business. He has them himself and he wanted to sell. I said, I need to patronize that. So I gave him the total amount of money for all three books. I must admit that I did not get a chance to read the other two, like uh, Voting and Correction dans la Presse Écrite Beninoise and uh, Parler Écrit Sans Faute. But I took time to read I can attendez le requin malgré lui. I was flabbergasted, to say the least. I think saying that I was mesmerized by what I read in that book is an understatement. I was so impressed that I called the guy back. Wow, you wrote this? This is so wonderful. How did you get to gather all this data and uh, really craft the work so beautifully to the point that late professor Felice Rocco, the giant of African history in our country, agreed to preface your book. Okay, you know what? Thank you very much, but I want to congratulate you on the job well done. Three days later, I called him. I said, you know what? I think we need to get that book translated into French. I elected to do that. He didn't ask me, nor did the uh, um, Member of Parliament, Honorable Nathan Yake. So I took it upon myself to translate the work. And then when I talked to him, he said, you know what? Hey, he is really delighted to hear that. Then I should speak to Honorable Nathan Yake. Then I called the guy. I got the number and then called the guy. Because, by the way, I have uh, a younger brother at the National Assembly as well. But anyway, I called the guy, you know, surprisingly, contrary to what we usually experience in our country, from some big wigs in politics and some giants, they would just say, who the hell are you calling me? And where did you get that number from anyway? But the guy took the number nicely. Hello, professor. Yeah, what can I do for you? I said, you know what? I just read something. I was so flabbergasted. So I need to get your work done lady. He said, OK, you know what? Hey, I don't mind. However, you need to talk to the author of a source language, of the source text first. 
not knowing that, I already talked to the upstairs guard. So I said, okay, you know what? Don't worry, I will I will contact him. Then I reported to the upstairs guy, Luke Fenakbeli, and say, okay, I spoke to Honorable Nathan Diake already, but he wanted you to give your consent. And he said, you know what? I will give my consent in writing. And he wrote to me, which I passed it on to Honorable Nathan Diake. That's how it all started. So mm -hmm. I requested an appointment to meet with the guy himself to tell you the whole truth. I went to HCM, and I know, you know HCM. And the guy has about eight campuses across the country, in Port Novo, the capital city of Benin, in Cotonou, in Boycon, in Paraku, hey, name it. A giant, but he was in his office, simple, down to earth. And then the secretary announced me. And he said, come on over, professor. And I went in there and said, yes, professor, how are you? And then we spoke. Basically, I was so mesmerized. I was so impressed by the affability of the guy. Of course, he's my younger brother. You know, hey, I'm, you say you don't like the word older. I'm older here, but again, you prefer the word wise. So we are both wise. You may be wiser than I am because you are my senior by far at the, uh, the Ecole Normale Superior, the Teachers Training University College. So. Uh, the wise man, and that I sat down. The guy talked to me, and we left there. I was so impressed. So I got down to brass that automatically and started translating the work. That's how it all started. That's how I met him because I knew him from, I did not know him from Adams before that episode. That's how I got to know the guy. And then right. I started to work. Every time you send him a message, Honorable Natalia K, how are you doing? Yes, I started the work already, et cetera, et cetera. He will respond promptly. Very I good. have not seen anybody in this country that you will send a message to, and spontaneously, the guy will reply. Even if he doesn't want to write a lot, he will say, well received, with thanks. I okay. really appreciate that. Okay. That's right there, an indication of humility. Although he's a big shot, he's a big, a real big shot. That is correct. Really a shooting star in the gloomy sky. So that's, that's how I get Thank you. I, I know I will give you opportunity to say more about uh, about this, uh, but uh, I can't just help asking you why you use a fierce shark and why, in spite of himself in your translation, you say a man is uh, honorable, not only I care, a man to fear or a fearless man. And uh, in the book, or the first part, not only I care, a rebellious trick child was there. Yeah. Tell us more about it, will you? I love that. Hey, flattery. No flattery intended, Professor Balobi, you are really a giant. Because I sent that book in really soft copy to many people. Maybe they have not gotten a chance to read it. And for you, the following day, automatically, you have uh, really read that thing from start to finish, from cover to cover. And then all of a sudden, you say, you know what? I want to invite you on my show to talk about that. Some people may think that I begged for that. No, I did not even talk to you. Of course, we are good colleagues and friends, genuine friends. We've been uh, together for a long time, since uh, the American Cultural Center, when we were teaching in the English language program. Of course, you are my senior, and then we were teaching there, then we met in America, and we've been really good friends ever since. We even taught together at the University Institute of Science and Technology, and you know, every time you come for your vacation, I do not give you a chance just to rest. I will just give you a lot of seminars because I know exactly who you are. And the way you taught those courses, believe you me, all my students were raving about you. They wanted you to come back. As a matter of fact, they told me that for the defenses, you will be the chair. They were, and since I was the director and chair of a department, I knew that I was going to get you there before problems started in Nigeria, and then otherwise you will have been chairing all these things. Students were raving about you, and I'm sure some of them are still in contact with you right now, especially mm -hmm. Antifat and many others. So really, really I appreciate that. And I always tell everybody who cares to listen to me that Professor Balubi is a workaholic. 
he's uh, really a bookworm because Prof, for him to add in, Prof, also add, it's not about me today it's not about me please let's get no 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 i know but, uh, but, but uh, you know what it's that. not about you but i'm, I'm yeah. talking we have more than an hour to talk and then who i have really in front of me who i have on the other side i think people need to know him it, it, as a matter of fact you need no introduction in this country anyway and uh, also in america certainly so but i just need to open that parenthesis just, just to make people understand exactly who you actually are. You read the book and you asked me exactly that you wanted to have me on your show. I was more than happy. But again, the way you even made the offer was just like I had no other choice but accept. You knew that I could not say no, but you say, yeah, you counted on me to make that possible. I say, you know what? Hey, I am in hot water right now. So let me just accept it. And that's how it started. Now, when I put the fears sharp in spite of itself, I said a couple of minutes ago that the book itself, the book in French is titled Ake Natonde, Le Requin Malgré Lui. Yeah. So I just translated exactly what is there. However, the, the fears, because yeah. inside the book, while reading, you know how fierce it was. So yeah. that was just an amplification in translatology. So that's why. And re rebellious strike, child, that is something, for example, that is innate in the Honorable Nathan Leake. Because while you read it, you know that wherever he was from, he originated from Naogon. People were really rebellious against the French colonialism. And that they were, and the, even one scholar wrote about them and called them Le Garçon, the Rebel de Naogon. So, you can tell exactly that it is something that existed before this guy inherited that. So it is a really an innate thing for him. It's not that he's just rebellious and uh, saying no, no, no for, you know, no reason, but he is really a, an heir of a rebellious strike village or community. Thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. I thought I had to ask anyway for our viewers and listeners to fully understand those who would not right. uh, be able to make time to read the book from cover to cover. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, my next question is, uh, what are some, some, some of the lessons you may have, uh, you know, learned from this yeah. biographical okay. work? Uh, let's go after them, you know, one by one, if, if the time permits. But uh, what's the overarching picture? Thank you very much, Professor Balobi, for your wonderful question. My disquisition on MP Honorable Nathan Diake will revolve around six main planes. Yeah. I think we're having technical technical First, uh, the fifth one social okay. behavioral plane and six overall quality plane. Reading this book, I learned that this man, this young man named Nathan Diake, is just an intelligent young boy beyond compare. While he was in primary school. He was just a star. Nobody could really beat that guy. He was always the top of his classes. When he got to secondary school, because that's still scholastic, when he got to secondary school, apart from the sixth grade, the class that we call here sixième, that he shared the first spot somebody in the classroom, beginning his seventh grade, his class of St. Kim, he zoomed past everybody. He was the top and nobody could really beat him and even catch up with him. This is something that is really beyond my genius. When I read that, I said, this guy must be, because there is a myth in most African countries that says that, you know, our politicians are usually half uh, literate and, uh, you know, they are people who just want a shortcut to get rich and, uh, you know, on the back of the people, etc., etc. So they don't know that there are certain people who are really, really stars among them. And we do know that. 
And many people, even if they don't have a PhD and they don't have a master's degree and all this, they are highly intellectual. And I like uh, why you were paying due homage to our national mother, the person I call stalwart of the Benin Revolution last time. You say that we should not confuse noise with music by considering people who did not school in the white school that they are not intellectual. They are intellectual. Our grandmothers, grandfathers in villages are intellectual. They just did not go to the white man's school. I like that. So there are many, many intellectuals among them, and people don't know. Thank now, you. some people, most of the time, those we call geniuses, quote unquote, and brilliant, all right? Usually they are excellent. They really excel in elementary school. When they come to secondary school, it's a different ballgame. When they go to university, it's another world as well. But this guy stays consistent. In the secondary school, he was all the top from St. Kim all the way to Segun first. And what is even flabbergasting is that this guy stayed in 10th grade, a class to Segun, 10th grade, to really try the high school diploma, basically. He was passing from 10th grade to 11th grade to premiere, that he was trying hard to skip. He did not want to spend his time in premiere at all. And as he passed from the 10th grade to 11th grade with flying colors, he skipped basically many classes in premiere in uh, 11th grade. He skipped the classes to the point that people started wondering, was it because this guy was our top for the high school entrance examination that we call BPC. It was the top that they had, for example, a test there, a mock exam in the whole Agony region, including Kobe, Zayana, Do, Wengi, and all this. And the guy happened to be the top of the whole place. Not only the top of his school, but the top of the whole region. That was really flabbergasting. And then when he got into the, um, the 10th grade, as brilliant as he was, he didn't want to really spend time in 11th grade. But he stayed there for a few months and he disappeared. People started wondering, what happened to this guy? Did they put a spell on him? Our hero, our this, our you know, top of the, 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 the town? And they were even thinking, because you know our country is considered the country of the Voodoo, and then if you want to talk about traditional African power, Come to Benin, you know that. And then people started thinking that somebody might have put a spell on that guy, poor guy, to kill him. But then he disappeared. And while he was away, he was really crafting. He was really cracking the whole syllabus of 11th grade on his own. And then together with that, he cracked also the syllabus of 12th grade, terminal. And then later on, a few months later, the guy showed up only to tell his friend that he was sitting for a college entrance examination, the baccalaureate, all right? The GCE O level, uh, A level. And the people say, no, it, that cannot happen. But as the guy left Cover, the village over there, Cover, to come to St. Rita to try that unheard of thing. And there, there was a head of school, the principal at the time, he said, you know what? That is a chance we don't want to take because if you take a chance like that and your student fail, you are the one losing percentages. Yeah. We don't want to take that chance. And the more they were hardening their position not to allow Natonde Ake to sit for that college entrance examination, basically leaving the second, the 10th grade, the guy's determination was really fueling to the point that they became parallel. His determination, his strong determination to really sit for that examination without ever seeing the color of the 12th grade and even the smell of the 12th grade was really going up to the point that they became parallel and they couldn't stand one another. Then the guy said, okay, you know what? I can't just stay there and waste my time because I know, I trust myself. Not that I am overconfident, but I am self-confident. There is a difference right there. So it's not, some people will consider that as braggadocio, but it's not. He just trusted his intellectual ability, knowing that he could go there and crack that exam in no time. 
Then the school officials said, no, we are not going to let you do that. The guy to give him a chance, he decided to leave that CJ Centrita and went to bigger men. And that bigger man, he could not register in the regular classes. There is something they call Université Populaire that you know. It's just like, um, it's not community college, but uh, close to that. And then it's evening courses most of the time for people who have repeated the high school diploma many times and who people who are civil servants and wanting to get that high school diploma to give them a chance to get promotion. He registered in that Université Populaire to give, to maximize his chances for success. Yeah. But then he got there, and what I like that Kelly uh, said beautifully in the book, he said that not only Ake had had a lot of teachers in his life, but uh, the best of all of them is his, himself. He is uh, the best of all his own teachers. So the guy decided to say, when I was at the University of Populaire, he spent a couple of weeks there, and he said, you know, I am out of here because I'm not sure they are teaching any good things here. He stayed on his own, and then he started cracking the thing, and he went for the examination, which he passed with flying colors. Believe wow. you. Wow. If that is not an indication of a genius, yeah. if that is not an indication of uh, real stamina, intellectual stamina, I don't know what else I can call that. that is and then what is even surprising, there was a time when the guy was, uh, uh, he, they, took, they gave uh, uh, a mock exam, and at some point, they decided that he failed. He did not pass. He said, hey, excuse me. They did not find his name. And then the head of school said, this can happen to anybody. You may be as brilliant as you are, right? But it can happen, especially if you are too confident and you are really cocky, you may get things wrong. The guy said, you know what? I know that I passed that mock exam even before they started grading the papers. And people say, no, you know what? You are too braggart. That is braggadocio right there. And then he started whining, 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 and uh, some of his friends got the news to the head of school. The head of school very upset. He said, you know what? Hey, I want to order that people recheck everything, check everything, verification, at least to confound this cocky guy. He leaves you me. They checked the verification, and not only did the guy pass that mock exam with flying fellow. He was the top of his school. He was the top of the whole Agony region. So how many people have not been victim of that neglectfulness of human beings, of yeah. examiners? How many? So if this guy had not really pushed, he has not really uh, stayed it on course and said, you know what, I passed my exam, we need to verify everything, he would have been declared failed like that. So that is one lesson that we have to learn that not everybody who failed the exam are really zombies. Some of them are hardworking people, but because of human failure, sometimes human neglectfulness or slovenliness, you know, they can fail. That, that guy shows us that if you are really confident in yourself, you don't have to show people that you are bragging, but you still have to stick to your gun and say, let's check. Let's check again over and over again. That is really interesting right there. That yeah. is in school, like as a student, school boy. But the guy got to the university. And I did not even finish. There is something that slipped my mind. I meant to tell. Yeah. You may not I be. Need to explain, I need to explain this one so that our viewers and listeners will understand that in the French and Francophone system, the high school diploma, you can get as many as you want. When the guy passed in America, I never heard of anybody getting two high school diplomas. You, you need only one to go to college. But here, you have different sections. You have a, a C, A, B, C. A is for humanity, letters and humanity. B is for economics. C is for hard sciences, like, uh, you know, That's mathematical right. sciences, physical That's sciences. Right. Yeah. And then D is life and earth science, biology, et cetera, et cetera. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. the guy passed the science and technology session, ST, at the time uh, during the revolutionary period. Yeah. They changed all our majors from ABCs to, to uh, LSS, LL, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. A plus, 
all this ST, BG, biology, geology, and all this, they change it. The guy got that, he passed that high school diploma, science and technology major, and then as soon as he entered the university, he decided to go for another high school diploma because he wanted to be an accountant. He got mathematics, and he was really good at mathematics to the point that there was even a time he was the teacher of his uh, colleagues in ninth grade, troisième. In the class of troisième, the math, the math teacher never showed up at some point. You know how people did not post the uh, teachers quickly, and the math teacher had not shown up, and people were already turning the whole class into a marketplace, and the, the assistant principal, the censor, the censor showed up to the class and say, a classroom and say, you know what, you guys are being rascal right here. I think we need to find a way of occupying you, making you busy while the math teacher is sent to you. Right. And students should tell the associate principal, you know what, we don't even need a teacher at this point. There is somebody here who is a math teacher, who is our boss, Natonde right. Ake, and he could take care of us while we're waiting for the teacher to come. And right. the guy became the teacher of his colleagues, his fellow classmates, while the math teacher was not around. And he did a fantastic job to the point that when the math teacher showed up, he didn't need to go over anything anymore. He checked and everything was correct. Very good. Right, that one that right there is an intelligent young compare. That he is got to the university, he registered in uh, uh, economics, and then he started, but because his um, first plan was to become a pilot and uh, aircraft engineer, but they never launched that one. Then he decided when he got to the university, he registered in economics and he wanted to emulate people like uh, former President Yaiboni, uh, Pascal Irene Kupaki, those big names of Yachale Abdullahi who were at the CIO. And uh, they were the talk of the town at the time. And he wanted to become that as well, to go to Central Bank of West African State, the CIO. But unfortunately, the competition, the test had never been launched. That's why he lost that. But based on that, he went to get another uh, high school diploma called G2, which is for accounting. So he has two of them at the university. And then while everybody, there was a time, there was a completely uh, a frozen year. It was at the time of the frozen year. My people were rioting, students, uh, uh, you know, manifestation and all this to the point that the year has been completely void. It was okay. a frozen year and that he was part of that. Pra but then, Pra Prof. Wiswada, I yes. know you have, you have more to say than we can cover in an hour. Let me exactly. just uh, move to the next question and to say, actually, you've already shown, I mean, so much light yes. on, the, yes. on this okay. question. Uh, because of when I read the book, you were describing its birth circumstances, education, how, uh, how I mean, everything you just said, and growing into a man who's mature beyond his age. Everything you've said now actually uh, uh, corroborates uh, that right. those aspects of the book. Uh, is that is that not correct? A couple yes, of, it is. Uh, just a couple sec in a couple of seconds. Do you have something to add? And I mean, a couple of seconds. Okay, in politics, in politics, you know, uh, politics is not, uh, you know, uh, a dinner, a gala dinner kind of. It is uh, uh, a place where people just uh, give yeah. uh, uh, low blows and all these, yeah. all kind of. Uh, and you know, let us not even go there, okay? No okay. politics. But, but no politics is very from, tricky, eh? There was another part from employee to employer. From very good, employee from employee to employer. employer. People have right. this guy, they have professional qualification, but they have no job. But this That's guy right. became self employed and employed other people, which should become everybody's dream. Graduating from school or from any professional or technical or vocational school, you should put your mind to what? Creating jobs. Am I not yeah. right? Yes. So, from employee yes. to employer, founder of a regionally renowned school of management with campuses, That's as I said earlier, almost everywhere in Benin. And right. you know what? There were graduates all over the place. And uh, some of them can be traced all the way to Seychelles in the Indian Ocean. I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. She had luck or no, hard work 
and Jimmy. You did a wonderful research, man. I told you, and I told the viewers, although you tell that oh, this is not about you, uh, I meant to say certain things because, but uh, you know, you were able to read the book inside and out. I can tell. The guy was, he came out of the university with uh, uh, an equivalent of the master's degree. They call it DEA. They are yeah, Diplôme d'études approfondies. So an advanced professional degree, but uh, it is the equivalent of the master's degree now. He came out of that in economics. The guy could have gone for his uh, doctorate, but I, uh, during his time, there was not a doctoral uh, uh, department and all these uh, open uh, in our university here. But he stopped there and automatically people targeted him and he started teaching at PGA of all places. PGA was one of the best vocational schools in our country at some point run by uh, people from France, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, at least I, yeah. I hated the word to white people and all this, but again, you know, big shots who really run the thing at the time, all right? And uh, he was teaching their accounting. But then you know how everywhere, People are just that there are brothers and sisters, joy kill, uh, kill joy, yeah? and then they will cause problems to you. All of a sudden, the guy was teaching and students were raving about him. All of a sudden, one of his friends that he even helped join the school caused him trouble between him and his employers. That's how he left there. As soon as he left there, automatically, he got into another company, big one, by owned by Tanquin. Uh, at the time, through test, and he worked there. And as a matter of fact, concurrently with that, he was a consultant for many companies in accounting. And all of a sudden, you know, there is a saying that every cloud has a silver lining. While people are putting you down, thinking that they are crushing you, yeah. they are actually helping you. So it is a blessing in disguise yeah. that that guy should cause him the problem at PG and the, together with some of his friends, they started the what they call the commerce in the management. That's called the advanced school of uh, business and management. management. So that was very, very, very good. And yeah. then, you know, and uh, the, the thing, the PG started flourishing to the point that it became the talk of the town and everybody started becoming, some people were jealous, of course. It happened like that when uh, other big weeks of uh, university institute and private universities started causing him problem. One even took him to court for something right. about uh, the recognition of their uh, degrees, the, the degree certificate. Yeah. But in the end, somebody who sued was the one who lost. The guy won. So there were so many things that were happening to the point that you wonder, not only because the guy have social behavior be, be, beyond, beyond compare, but also his father was a big man. And he said, you may believe it or not, my voodoo is the one protecting my children. There you go. Voodoo is all, yes, Minona. Minona, that uh, the, the initiates uh, call as a voodoo, the, the witchcraft, the yeah. voodoo that deals with witchcraft. And yeah. the guy, what I even appreciated in the book is that although he's really a powerful medicine man with exceptional, exceptional power, he said, you know what? I know God does exist. Yeah. I believe in God. And only God can create people. The voodoo are powerful, but they just serve as intermediary between human being and God. It's just like a division of labor. God yeah. has two children, and he gives them different powers to do. Very, 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 very beautiful. Unfortunately, we're people. running out of time. Unfortunately, we're okay. running out of time. Oh, really? Let me say this. Yeah, time flies by okay, so fast. So let me say this, and then you will give us your uh, your final statement, and then I will okay. conclude the show. So uh, just one brother, our younger brother, uh, uh, Natonde Ake, the Honorable Natonde Ake, member of Parliament, to know mm -hmm. that through this show we are celebrating him while he's alive. We are That's celebrating right. him. I like that. Il faut enterrer les gens pendant qu'ils sont. Pendant qu'ils sont encore. No matter how much you spend later on, when it's already in the gasket, and then as as you know, pay the last homage. That's right. It's that that is tattoo free. Yeah. People so usually we're celebrating. They wait until you pass. They they yeah. may even be praying that you pass. 
and yeah. started celebrating and saying all kind of big words. Yeah, he was so wonderful. I, He's such a great guy, etc., yeah, etc. Yeah. While you were there, they wanted to stab you in your back. Exactly. All right. So, so what in conclude, a nutshell, Professor? In a nutshell, I would just say nutshell, that. Uh, I would just say in a the nutshell, did, uh, did you learn from translating uh, this biography? A lot, a lot. I learned a lot, and I wanted to sum it up in the following word. And just when we take uh, the member of the when we take uh, the member of the parliament, Nathan the RK, he yeah. may be summed up as follows: He's mm -hmm. the nipple ultra and non parallel of the following human qualities: intellectual stamina, self confidence, workaholic, die hard, humility, altruism, and affability. Wow. Thank you so much. Bye. Dear friends, fans, and followers, Temple Africa TV, the greatest Pan African TV for Africans, will soon be on satellite. Please do not hesitate to support us in any way you can. And I mean okay. any way you can. And I hope, brother, not only our case, listen, we may be reached via email at africtv at gmail.com. Or directly by phone at uh, 612, of course, the international code first, then 612-224-2020. Let me say it again, international code 612-224-2020. Le code international 612 our show also solicits donations to annually reward and stimulate excellence like this person, right? This Professor Wetsuada. People like him need to be uh, also encouraged, right? Like uh, Pelly, they need to be encouraged and they need to be rewarded while they are here living with us. So we stimulate excellence to innovation and inventions in Africa. What's up for Africa strongly believes in Africa's new hope. La Nouvelle Espérance Africa. We know the best is still ahead of us, and the sun shall rise again. Professor Thomas Wesuadan, thank you for coming to our wonderful show. And let me also, of course, thank our producer, Malik Sal, who's always working tirelessly, I can tell you, and miraculously to make the seemingly impossible definitely possible. Humbled and privileged to host this weekly show, I'm Professor Desiree Balubi from Norfolk State University in Virginia, USA. Thank you for watching. And may God bless you all. And may God bless you, Professor Balubi. You are a shooting star in the gloomy sky. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. We're delighted. Yes. Du nouveau à Minneapolis, Tempo Afrique Travel. Vous voulez voyager? Achetez vos billets d'avion à l'agent de voyage Tempo Afrique Travel. Avec l'agent de voyage Tempo Afrique Travel, pas de problème de connexion, pas de problème de transfert de vol. Avec l'agent de voyage Tempo Afrique Travel, c'est le voyage en toute tranquillité, en toute beauté, de votre maison jusqu'à votre destination. Votre satisfaction et notre plaisir.